Well, hello there, folks. Hope you all have a fantastic Christmas. Um, what a fantastic uh, set of racing we've also had in the last few days, I'd say. It's been fantastic, hasn't it? Brilliant. Absolutely. Fantastic. Loads of food, yeah, loads of beer and loads of Absolutely. racing. Absolutely, and racing. Although it been the racing being a bit crazy, let's just say. Um, yes. But let's start with what, you know, arguably got to be the biggest story um, of the Christmas period. Then throw it on, Mark. Celebrating. <laughs> All celebrating there, Mike, actually, remind you. Um, yeah, look, there's not much really I can say um, about it. I mean, it was just an outstanding performance. Funny you say that because you haven't shut up since then. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I haven't got much to say. Mm. <laughs> I don't to shut, look, it, you know, it was a field that was set with such real strong horses. Mm. Um, and if, if I'm completely honest with you, Frodon's always been a horse that I'd always put a bet on, no matter what the price, no matter what race it's entered into. Mm. Uh, when I looked at, as we spoke about championship post beforehand, it was always a, a race that I maybe thought a bit stood half a chance when it's jumping um, and half a chance. There's just a couple of things that really made it exciting for me about the race. Um, right at the start, of obviously for, you know, for people who actually tuned into the race, um, you know, Frodon was a little bit um, jumpy at the start, sort of mm. like turn and take Brian Frost the other way. So that was mm. a, that was a big mark to get him under control. The next one for me is how he dictated the race. He jumped every fence perfectly, and it's like a football match in a way. When a team goes in front, and they're able to slow the pace down in the game. I'm not sure if that threw a lot of the other horses off by mm. slowing the slowing the pace down. But look, twenty to one, it was an absolutely phenomenal performance. Um, I'm going to be the first one now to say that I, I bet he's placed for him to win the Cheltenham Gold Cup in 2021. It's already been confirmed. He's going straight to Cheltenham. Mm. Um, and I think with a performance like that, I think it stands every chance. It's, it's silenced the doubters. Not many doubters, mm. but it's just silenced a few critics out there mm. that um, how unpredictable racing has been this year. But it, look, you can't take away the performance few of the horses in that race, you know, I'm sure a few of the other guys will have a few things to say about mm. it off. But, um, look, you know, as I've said, I can sit here and I can talk about Frodon for 24 hours. Yeah. Um, but I'll take, I'll take my hat off to the train. I'll take my hat off to Bryony Frost. He absolutely mm. um, ran a phenomenal race. Um, and I look forward to seeing him on the 19th of March. In the Chelsea World Cup, mm. I think there's a great chance. A great well, chance. you know, there was something else you got right. Uh, he did regret the, the choice of horse, but he didn't win anyway. And that was uh, you told Harry Cobden he was wrong. No, well, <laughs> yeah, Harry. Well, do you know what? It was it, it was the same for a lot of horses. You know, the question marks over Santini being supplemented mm. something in the race. Lost in translation, um, the clash between um, Clandes Ibo, which I think done really, really well to get third. Mm. Um, the one horse that I do take my hat off to, I think mm. congratulations to Ruth Jefferson and waiting mm. patiently. I thought that was a really good run to finish second. Um, surname, I don't know. Santini is just not making three miles. I'm getting that one out there now. I'm, I'm mm. sure I'm going to get ridiculed for that. Um, but again, um, well, it comes back to what Sean said once again before. We've seen uh, Santini come into a race where a lot of people liked him and, and hasn't delivered again. It happens every time, doesn't it? it mm. I don't understand it with that horse. There, there's got to be something, obviously. There's got to be something with that horse mm. because it's a very much Marmite horse, isn't it? It splits mm. the yeah. whole of the racing world down the middle. It's not like it's yeah, a small yeah. minority that like the horse and a larger that don't. It's actually it's, it's quite even when you look at it. There mm. are a lot of Santini supporters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were, and, and there are a lot of horses that you you follow, mm. and you, for some reason I never get there. And you keep following it. You know, there's this horse that always crops up, and you go, "Oh, I'll back that," because I know it's mm. let me down sixteen times before, but this one time, <laughs> it won't, he's yeah. going to turn it around. Yeah, and, yeah. But Santini, that, that, there must be frustration because the, the fans of this horse, because it's not a bad horse by any means, the fans of this horse must be so wound up by it. Yeah, because it was disappointing. There wasn't mm. excuses. There's, I mean, they're going to come out with excuses for most horses. I'm sure there was one for surname. I'm sure there was one for plans, even though he did run on fantastically. Mm. I'm, I'm sure there's one for lost in translation. You know, 
Mm. Over the next couple of days, we're going to hear reasons why. We can't disprove it. Mm. You know, yeah. we, can, we can't. Um, it's the same with Altior. That, that thing is a beast. We know that's a beast. Mm. Is it more a case of a past tense was as opposed to still is? Yeah. Right? That's not, that's, that's you know, you can't argue what that horse has done. It's demolished. I mean, we've been there, Glenn. And yeah, yeah. First hand how great Altior is. Sorry to oh, move. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, hold on on that. But Altior is. I'll never forget watching him race against Underso at uh, Sandown. Yeah, one of the conditions. best spectacles I've ever seen is watching that horse run a, a, mm. a whole field into submission. Yeah, um, yeah. But there comes a point mm. where the young pretenders come in. Okay, no one saw it from Nube Negra. Mm. Um, but. Yeah, yeah. Nube Negra, you could see three out he was winning. That's how good he was running. Yeah. Mm. Right, three out, right? Yeah, he'd he'd beaten out. yeah, he had already been the three out. Fair play to Altior, because Nico even said that he was he was working a long way out. You can't mm. argue this horse's ability and will to want to win. Mm. But will to win will only get you so far. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. One I just right. and, about Altior, sorry, is that you look at other horses that was in that race, Rug Viff, who had a dominating performance not so yeah. long ago. And Altior managed to finish a good 20 lengths ahead of Rube Riff. And yeah, that's... Yeah. And we talk, Look, like I say, I take nothing away from Altior the horse. Like I say, probably since I've been watching racing, other than Hurricane Flyer I've seen and Faheen and likes of that, Altior is one of the greatest live spectacles you can watch. Yeah. When he jumps a fence or even when he's off the bit for a way out and you think, oh, he's got nothing there. And then all of a sudden, he's back on the bit. Mm. And he's, he's winning going away. I'm, it just has to come. I don't think retirement is fair. I don't no, think there are just, that next. I'll, you know, I mean, it's a bit too premature, isn't it? Oh, come on. Horses are allowed a day off. He hasn't run yeah, yeah. for 10 months or however, however long it be. Mm. Give it a chance. Again, yeah, absolutely, there's yeah. stories now coming out because obviously um, Henderson is shutting the yard um, for a couple of weeks. Mm. Whether that's anything to do with it, I don't know. But Again, these are theories you can't disprove. Us as the general public, we are privy. I think the reaction as well said it all yesterday um, when, uh, you know, Nicky Henderson said that he'd spoken to Nico de Boinville and they both said, you know, we're so glad we never ran him at Sandown. Mm. Um, you know, he's won, you know, in his last 22 runs, he's won 20 of them. Mm -hmm. And like you say, there comes a time when, you know, a horse can't win every race. No, 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 of course not. You know, we can talk about Altior all the time long, but we can talk about other up-and-coming horses, as we always talk about, yeah, Russia, and Boursois, who also had um, a great performance. Yeah, yeah. What, yeah, Jamie, what your highlight over the festive? Uh, the highlight was, I thought, Siskin, Sprinter Saku Mark II. Um, he's... I thought he was impressive. Hmm. Um, I, you see I, thought I, chase. I think a champion chase. I think definitely. Um, or, he could, or he could go Ark. Could he go Arkle as well? I thought he could go Arkle. I think he could go Arkle. I think. And then he, if he does, he wins that. Yeah. yeah. And I think after that, he will, I would imagine after that, you're looking at 2022, you could see him going to Queen Mother Chase after that. Yeah. Um, but he's but you've always said, haven't you? Sorry, Jay, you've always said about um, Shishkin that like you oh. see that new sprinter Sakura in it. Yeah, oh yeah. And you that's that's with, that's that you know, that's that's you know, that's brilliant because you could see the pace, the way he was running towards the fence and jumping so quick, where he was just jumping from A to B. And even um today with uh, Mick Fitzgerald, he said he was like three seconds up on the Altior race with uh Nubra. Yeah. Yeah. Um, on him, so you could tell he's got pace. So he can, he could. I reckon they, they might give him a um, hopefully, they might give him a run at Cheltenham to uh, mm. to um, see how he does on the actual course itself, yeah. or they might just go straight to straight to Cheltenham itself uh, in March or whatever, whatever races he might have beforehand. But he'll, I reckon, it will be an article and he'll be hard to beat. I just find it frightening place. the way he puts himself right every time. Oh, yeah, there was a there was. There was a couple the ability you need to get out of trouble. Oh yeah. I mean there was one there was a couple of incidents on um at Kempton. Um he made 
he made a couple of hash, like, you know, novice mm. mistakes, but mm. he got away with it because he's got quick feet. Mm. Um, he got away with it. On his first outing, it was like, you know, whoa, that was like a breathtaking performance. The, then it was the second time that he, he mm. ran at Kemp- Kempton. He made a few, you know, a few mistakes, but, mm. hey, everybody makes mistakes, even horses. Um, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, out with Altior, I, I would say he'll have his final swan song at Cheltenham. Mm. Um, there was there is there is a bit of cloud over with with uh, with Anderson and with and with actually yes three have seen out your in the stable in the flesh and bone and he's mm. a massive you could tell oh. like he's got everything equipped for him mm. to, to to jump as uh, as a for a fence horse um, jumping yeah. over fences. Um, I think there's quite a lot on social media. I think there's quite a lot of um, anti Henderson because. Once that um, that message was put out this morning, and then everybody was going another excuse, another excuse, mm. another well, excuse. Well, like I say, it wasn't just that. And I was just going, I just, I just thought, for God's sake, mm. look, that every trainer, every stable, if it's flat, um, flat national one, they're going to get a few, you know, yeah. uh, bugs in their in their. Of course stables. they are, and, and it look, doesn't help. Obviously, no. the epiton as well didn't perform, no. but but to be fair. She just didn't see him at the races and still come no, second, flat in the third last. Let's be honest with you, all that has done, she'll drift out in the price a little bit mm. oh, for, for the champion hurdle and make make her backable. Uh, yeah, because yeah. I don't I don't think that's anything to read into that. I wouldn't read into that. Yeah. Uh, Sean, uh, that, is, that is the absolute problem. When Altior didn't win, there's criticism. Mm. Um, you know, when Epiton, which went off at a massive price, I think it was one to four, I believe. Mm. Mm. Okay, you can't take away Silver Street's win in that, no. but there's no nothing negative at all. No. Look, no, all no, it no, is, yeah. Look, look, let's be honest with you. We all know how social media works, we all know how the internet works. After every race, everybody becomes a veterinarian, a jockey, <clears throat> a trainer, and an yeah. owner, right? And a handicapper, <laughs> yeah, and a handicapper. It's like when anything goes on, everyone becomes a politician, everyone's a football player, everyone's a like, we know our social media works and everyone's yeah. oh, yeah. two pence work, but that is the beauty of it. That everyone's allowed their two pence. I mean, you back, just have back, to take go, on, Jay. Yeah. I mean, back back to Silver Streak, that was really good because that was he needed that grade one behind him. He needed yeah. that, he wanted it, that one. Um, that was good to see, even exactly. with Evan Williams. That's a yeah. that's a flag bearer for Evan Williams. You'll see him at the Champion Myrtle. Even though he's gonna, you know, if he comes second, third, or even win it, you know, that'll yeah. be a great. A, I have great to be honest, I would have appreciated that win to come on the two times that I did back him. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I mean, um, though. But that, like you say, that's that's not discredited Everton. I mean, when they went back through the race, if you listen to what Ruby said, was from the first fence, she didn't want to, she didn't want to be there almost. Mm. Um, so there we go. She didn't want to be at the races. Animals like humans have off days. It's that simple. Exactly. Um, unfortunately, everyone pipes up and thinks they know best. Um, and it he, is what it is. That's what the internet and social media is great for. Um, yeah, yeah. But saying that on that point of view, mm. saying that from that point of view, she probably, she'll go to the champion hurdle, she'll get the allowance. And can you still see anything beating her up to you? No. There we go. So all it's done is he's made it for us. A round circle that yeah. you answer your questions. <laughs> yeah, for us, it's made a it's made a backable. Sean. Oh yeah. Sean, you talk about people who think they know. Who think the first two races on Boxing Day, the first race was 125 to one winner. Then at another course, there was 100 to one winner. Now you. I mean, it's nonsense. But anyway, yeah. and by anyway, the- just quickly because I know Glenn's going to want to get onto the selections. I, um, um, I want to mention one thing. Uh, cool. I just want to mention Shaq and Pessoa. I thought it was fantastic. Shaq and Pessoa and Appreciate over in Ireland. Mm. Um, I, I thought were fantastic. And they'll do. They're, they're, they're Cheltenham Festival winners. Yeah. Mate. But go on, Glenn. Sorry, mate. Well, I, what, while I'm still mentioning Ireland, I, I, I was once again very impressed with that. Zanny here again. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. One with anything in hand. Literally. Elliot. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, all right. You know, Jack, Jack sort of. Yeah, it was a bit of a steering job, which we probably all knew, in all honesty. Um, but, yeah, um, again, just when he needed to, just went, come on, we need to win this now. And off they trottle. Yeah, yeah. You know, and nobody could go with. So, um, yeah, that's, you know, 
That's no, going great. places as well. That one. Well, this well, is no this is the that. time of year, isn't it? Like three months I mean, before Cheltenham, where yeah. the Irish lot starts playing their hand a little bit, and we start seeing I mean, what's really going on over there. I mean, there was a couple that I wrote down. I mean, that French Arsenal, the first race, that was impressive. Mm. Um, French one uh, that norm, that owners normally sell their horses and like on bumper races, and that uh, French Arsenal, um A S double E L, it ran at Leopard Stand. That, mm. that really was impressive. Appreciated. Yeah. Even didn't even jump the last fe- uh, last hurdle. That mm. was impressive. I've I've backed him uh, sixteen to one. Only a small stake. Sixteen to one each way for the supreme. Looks mm-hmm. like he'd be going to the supreme. That one. Well, I'll mention it for our one to watch video. Yeah. Um. The other one. The other thing I, I would say as well is the Dooleys and the Cheveley Park mm. stuff. You're gonna see. You're gonna see. Um, them silks a lot more in Ireland now. Yeah. Um, I think you're going to see them and also you're going to see them um, in England, um, the Dooleys, because they, they've got a couple of, I mean, even the first, the, was it the first race at, um, at Kempton? Um, what was the one? Um, it was in the, um, oh, Heroes du, du Cell, um in a juvenile hurdle in the first race. Mm. And when everybody was moaning about Henderson, Oh, he's not. You know, there's a there's a there's a cloud, and all of a sudden, he won. Was it won two or three races on that meet? That's what I mean. It's just people, didn't it? They like to have oh, their yeah. two fence worth and become experts. It's what balls down to. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I thought the big getaway was impressive. That was that was really good today, and the, and the Savile Chase. Well, that was absolutely. You know, yeah, I, thought Med, I thought Medan was going to win it, and then it just you know, on, I hope on, Medan was going to win it. Yeah, I thought Medan was going to win it. I've done it our each way. Um, but then, you know, El Plateau, really came for that, the clouds. That yeah. was fantastic. And that's, that the same, true, and that's the same jockey that won with uh, Chatham House. So yeah. that was his first grade one as well. So, you well, know, that's, fantastic. That let's hope that uh, New Year's hmm. brings the same. Yeah. Can, we have, can we have the same at 2021, please? But no <laughs> COVID. <laughs> All right, then, lads. Well, let's look at... Um, the first then what um I've, I've got one sean you've got one mark you've got two jamie you've got a couple um uh, let's just start with sean go on sean who do you sort of catch your eye um to be honest with you at the moment the only one that's really stood out to me is old grangewood um winner of this last year uh i've got to be honest with you i think he's done nothing wrong since that win i think it's three fours on the bounce three fourths on the bounce um he seemed to just struggle in the running um, of late, I'm hoping a return back to uh, the home of racing, jump racing, will probably ignite him a little bit more. Let's say uh, won it on a photo last year against Saint Calvados. Mm. Um, again, age isn't on his side against a pair of McManus young pretenders. Um, but yeah, Old Grangewood for me um, is my standout at Cheltenham so far. Um, I've also just quickly my horse hacked their place um, mm. one yep. yesterday. Events. He's scheduled to run again at Musselburgh, I believe, in the 225. So I'd like to see that go well again if it's declared. But yeah. as it stands, the old Grangewood for me in the 155 at Cheltenham. Okay, mate. Fair enough. Jamie, who do you like the look of then? Well, I can't say any, any more because Sean's just done me because I've got, he's been doing the MI6, hasn't he? He's been looking at me <laughs> notes or something. Yeah. Um, I've done, I've gone with old Grangewood. So He's just done that for me, so I'm not <laughs> going to say much. Uh, <laughs> well, done. it just makes a change that some of us agree. Normally, we're yeah, against each other. yeah exactly. Mm, Instead of all these match boxing um, <laughs> racing matches, um, so on the um, I'm going to go to Musselboro um, <laughs> on the 12:25, the Judeval Jude- um, hurdle race, class four, two miles, um, five and twenty in the same race as your horse, uh, Sean. Um, she um, she moved from uh, Mark Johnson's to mm. uh, Donald McCain, and she had her first run at Musselboro and won by 26 lengths um, and jumped really well um, at the track. Uh, she made a few bin office mistakes. Mm-hmm. Um, I think um, she won't have the easier time again. Um, she won't have the easy like the easy win. I think it's going to be a bit of depth and a bit of um, a bit of strength in this race um, yes. uh, on that day. On this day, um, so um, Brian Hughes said um, beforehand, um, riding her the first time, she was a bit gassy around the back straight. So I think um, what 
I'm hoping that uh, Brian Hughes is riding him, uh, riding her again. Um, might settle, have to settle, yeah. settle her again, try and settle a bit more, and uh, just to uh, go through the motions again, try and you know jump them hurdles with, um, very well, like she did. Um, hopefully, she won't go favourite because of that 26 length win. I hope not. Um, hopefully, she might go off the third favourite. Hmm. Um, either that. Um, I think she's got in, in a real good um, stable with Donny Mc, uh, Donald McCain because he's had a few um, a few good um, winners at Cheltenham, like with Pedders Cross and Overturn yeah. and all that. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's my each way selection um, for the 5 and 20. That's with uh, with Midland Park. Um, they're doing okay. And hopefully they've got a, a good um, mm. a filly to go to go with, go with to war with them um, for the jump season. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mark, who do you like then? Well, I was thinking about changing one and going for Musical Slave in the 155, just to have a bit of a battle with these two. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought I'll leave it and I'll stick with my two selections. But I'm going, first of all, one in the 120. Um, I think it's a quite uh, lovely name for this race. Paddy Power, goodbye 2020. Hello 2021. <laughs> million knots, yeah. Chase. Class one, grade two. Uh, two miles, four furlongs. And the Mr. Brownlow, 127. Important. Most important yards. Oh yes, um, I've gone with teams. Team Skelton um, Protectorat. I think that's the, the, yeah. the right pronunciation. Protectorat. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's two out of two on Novice's chases um, so far. It's had wins at Carlisle and Cheltenham. It's only a four-run field in this mm. one. Um, Ollie Murphy's the Wolf. Um, Philip Hobbs's Sporting John. But the main danger for me in this one is Nick Mitchell's Lieutenant Rocco, who had an impressive second at Cheltenham to the winner, Fusil Raffles, and finished mm-hmm. the of Chantry House. Um, but I'm sticking with Team Skelton. I think they're hitting form at the right time. Um, heavy ground is expected at Cheltenham, especially with the weather forecast, mm-hmm. but it has had two impressive seconds on heavy grounds, um, both being at Sandown. Um, it's set to be three pound higher and then it's last out in I shouldn't think that would be a problem no. um, mm. so that is my first selection um, odds for that horse is currently not out yet the second mm. I'm going over to Musselburgh the 210 the Betway Hominer handicap hurdle I believe it is um, one oh, mile no. seven furlongs and the important 124 yards currently good to soft I was toying between two of the Paul Nichols entered horses, but I've gone with the nine to two joint favourite Miranda. Um, I was toying between that one or friend or foe, um, which both of them have got quite interesting form. Um, Miranda's four out of seven over hurdles in his career, winning two um, and finished third in its last three outings. His last one being an impressive win uh, at Ludlow back at the beginning of December. Um, It is due to get a seven pound rise though in this race. Um, its last run back at Musselburgh um, finished third with Briley Frost on board. Um, but again, as we say with Team Skelton and Paul Nichols, both from both yards are hitting form at the right time. I think it's going to be an interesting race, but it's a six-year-old. I think that's open to further improvement. Um, so there, there you go. There's my yeah. two selections: um, Team Skelton um, in the 120 at Cheltenham and uh, Paul Nichols is in the 210 at Musselburgh. Okay, fair enough. Well, I'm going to keep mine very short, sharp and sweet because you haven't really left me any time. Um, so let's, uh, I've not had a, a, you know, huge news over the cards, uh, but one that does stand out, glancing at, well, you know, just before we came uh, on there to film here, um, McFabulous in the real kill. Um, it's a very good horse. Cobden's booked again. Um yeah, they know how to ride that horse, or he knows how to ride that horse, and he know, and they know how to find winners. So it's a tough race. You've got Call Me Lord on the blind side, Thomas Darby in there, um, uh, brewing up the storms in there. Um, you know, there's a few in there. So, um, you know, there's no foregone conclusion, but, um, you know, third last time, but I think, you know, more than capable of, of, of winning that field by the looks of it um, and got just as much a chance as any of the others, really, you know, in my opinion. Um, I, I, you know, I'm going to back it to, uh, you know, find form again and uh, and get that win. Yeah, so I mean, that's right my choice, one. lads. I mean, you're right now. I think he'll bounce back. back. Yeah, if he wins, then do you reckon he'll um, disturb the stayers hurdle uh, market? Probably, knowing how crazy this year's been. <laughs> 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 I 
you just don't know, do you, Jamie? That's the problem. You know what I mean? It, I mean, Matt Chapman was earlier on saying, you know, wasn't he, about the um, the stairs that doesn't seem the top two don't seem to have a lot to fear, but um, mm. you just it's just hard to sell, isn't it? This year, it really is, yeah. you know, with some of the results we've seen. So, anyway, so that that's gonna gonna be my choice. We'll um, we'll save further debate for another day. Um, so, yeah, fantastic racing we had, lads. Still more fantastic racing to look forward to before we all have to go back to work. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, enjoy the rest of your uh, Christmas break, lads, and um, keep in touch on what's happened. Let's look forward to some more fantastic racing. Indeed, we shall. More than Bye. See you later.